We can bring in Shane Gillis because I was at the fight. I saw Dennis sat next to me, just chirping the whole fight. Look at this guy. He looks like he's on the rotunda, Jane Fonda and Clute. He was making fun of the fighters, making fun of everyone in the audience, making fun of the girls behind us. He's so hilarious. No. Well, you see, he doesn't get out uh, with his friends as much like he used to or do stand-up or around us. So when I was around him, yeah, he was just dropping incredibly oh. funny he, He's got lines. all built up. Like, so, yeah. So Shane Gillis, who is our guest, great comic. Uh, I saw him there at the fight too, went over and said hi to him. He's a huge dude. I think I'm- Yeah, he's like six four. I don't think I'm that huge because everyone is seemingly- Extra huge. So anyway, he's a big dude. He he's very he's, funny. I see him a lot on Instagram. Yeah, I follow him. I see his clips. Very edgy. Uh, was on SNL for the shortest amount of time of any cast member. Probably. Uh, what do you mean? I don't. I don't remember that part. I think he was on for a day. No, he has a very it's interesting a story. story. And we we you know I like to say now break it down. We break down his adventure into being hired on Saturday Night Live and then essentially let go. And the emotion around that and the circumstances around that. So it's a compelling story. It's a unique uh -huh. podcast. And he is one of the best stand-ups yep. out there right and now. Filling up huge yeah. arenas, getting big bucks. I don't want to say the story was a roller coaster, but it was. I'm going to say was. something. There was actual real emotion. There were laughs, but yeah. there was real emotion on the podcast we did with uh -oh. Shane Gillum. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Gillows. Gillows? <laughs> Shane, is it, it Gillis or Willis? Yeah, it's Gillis, but you're kind of putting a little. Okay, Gillows. Okay, sorry. No, All it's right. good. It's just your interpretation. Okay, well, Shane, here's Shane and uh, enjoy. Enjoy. Look at Spade. I look like I'm from Yellowstone. That's not Kevin Costner? It's me, dude. God, Costner. Shane, are you on, guy? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> he was waiting for us to quiet we just, down. We just talk about anything. Thanks for uh, being here with us. Yeah, thanks, oh, buddy. Um, thank you guys for having me. Sp dude. Spade gets really, really boring really fast. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> that's He's a, heard. That's a joke. Um, no, Dana, you know, I know a lot of guys that uh, know Shane well. I don't know him well. I don't really know him. But um, all, all my funny friends think Shane is great. And uh, stuff I've seen is really good. And um, so it's fun to have you here. And hey, man. A bunch of stupid shit. I've, uh, my sons were told me uh, over time, they said, uh, you got to see this guy, Bill Burr. It's like 10 years ago or whatever. Then they go, you got to see this guy, Theo Vaughn. And then they said you and br oh, brought your special on, especially the, the one you did in the little club in Austin. Yeah. Which is pretty brilliant. I mean, it's got 8 million views. I think our listeners should understand this new idea of homemade show business where you don't have a corporate master and you're just doing stuff off the grid and you create this empire. It didn't exist. When I came through, it was Johnny Carson or an NBC guy for a sitcom. Now it's like the Wild West, so you're one of those people, I think, who'll do whatever you want, or you could go back in, uh, on SNL. I've talked to Lauren yeah. last <laughs> night. It's all good, yeah. I think it's a passage of time. It's that thing of like, you know, we look this special and we could really use like that kind of voice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not going to let it go. He wants to, he wants to prove he was right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you you had your, well, we're just getting all your greatest hits right now. Gilly and Keith. So you've been doing sketch comedy online too, which yeah. is uh, incredibly Funny, Isis, Toyota, and Trump speed dating. I didn't know you were an impressionist, but your Trump is very cool. It's really good. Oh, thanks, man. This is a good. I like this podcast, man. Yeah, this is good. It's only six <laughs> minutes today, yeah, so you don't, uh, have, you don't have to talk until the last two minutes. We usually <laughs> right. just talk. We we talk, we self congratulate talk about our guest <laughs> for twenty minutes. We compliment you, and then we tap out. And we play music, but anyway, how are you? That's all I had to say for now <laughs> i'm good things are good i gotta i'm uh, when i'm done with this i'm in new york right now i gotta drive to philly tonight and then I, i'm from harrisburg pennsylvania i gotta drive home dude he went he went to west point dana i know that's the thing i saw in one of the comments it's uh what's great about shane is, is he's got 30 points of iq that he's not letting the audience in on no, no i went I to like west that. point i went to west point for about three weeks 
So don't, <laughs> well, for real, I quit right away. Well, what was it uh, that I read about? It? Was it a football scholarship or were you uh, like 4.2? West, West Point's not easy, is it? I mean, to get into? No, it's it's easier when when you're playing football, which is what I was doing. But it's everybody there is on scholarship. There's no, you don't pay tuition at West Point. So uh, right. I got recruited so, to play football. So but, could I ask yeah. what your uh, position was and what your size uh, was? I was I played offensive line. I was about 6'3", 295, 300. <laughs> You're about 6'1", yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 6'1", yeah. 300. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're walking around the planet at 6'3", 295. Shit. Yeah. What did that feel like? Because you don't look, you, I mean, you look husky, but you're not. I didn't know you were that tall either. Yeah, you see, that's a monster. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. Physically, it hurts <laughs> to be that big, dude. Well, it's it like, sucks. even though you hold the mic, you're so tall, you have to kind of lean down to it, right? You feel like, <laughs> even though you are you could bring it up, you still have to get down to it, kind of, right? It's sort of a stylistic <laughs> yeah. thing, but it's yeah, very. Him and Kevin Nealon have to get down to the mic, even if they're holding it. They go, they just show how tall they are. It's so, yeah. It's too tall. But anyway, so that's uh, that's a fascinating. I've never met a comedian who was, uh, you know, an offensive lineman at 295. And then it's like yeah. well, pretty much one of the best guys doing stand up right now. That's a, yeah. that's an amazing. And you started in 2012, which seems like yesterday. Like my first set was in 1976. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Not only could I be your dad, I could be your grandfather. <laughs> I love the stuff you do about your your dad and screaming at the TV and all that stuff. It's really, oh yeah, really yeah. fucking. Thank fun. you. Yeah. So you start. Well, let's just get out of the way this SNL horse shit because okay, people tune out at minute three on us. We've found through studies. We've been talking about the metrics. Yeah. So they're already gone. So uh, now <laughs> so we can talk about it. We can um, get that behind us. Yeah. So uh, uh, we. So you we were have on our own SNL. Stories. Yeah. You were on now, it. Well, you were, let's yeah. go really far back, Dana. You were born. <laughs> And then fast forward to you got a call from Lauren. Well, Shane was on <laughs> SNL. That's all I know. I didn't read any further. I just want to know some of the sketches or what happened. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> so you're, you're, how was your time there as a cast member? <laughs> it was good. I went into the office twice. Did you really go in? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, counting the auditions, I went in maybe twice. Yeah. Not so. to meet anybody, just literally like damage control, like sitting there with Lauren talking about it yeah shane when you leave like, here you won't be coming back <laughs> he thought it was going he was like no we're gonna get past this and i was sitting there like there's no way there's no way oh he actually took that tack that's interesting that maybe he thought it would uh you know he he's obviously in a controversial business of comedy and yeah that show has always gotten in trouble so that's sort of interesting about your story is that what does it take in this day and age to go too far in that in their eyes and i guess you did but uh in you know that's the opinion mm -hmm. but two things that are, two things that are interesting you you bounce back which is hard to do uh and that's why like dana says you're a sort of a self-made guy doing this other way because that was sort of your only channel now uh, yeah, I, I didn't do that by choice. I would have much rather had people set things up for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would have been nice. It would have been very nice. But you feel a little better right now because the special was so well received. I mean, because that was your biggest mic drop and your sketch show. So you're in a different place than when you walked out of the 17th floor. You, you've, you've really yes. landed on your feet. The only thing I want to delineate, I may, I may be getting canceled but i didn't really get a sense of what you said other than like throughout my time on the planet doing comedy or even with my friends i would do impressions of racist people but i was not the racist it's like harvey corman if you take him at his word in you know blazing saddles have you seen blazing saddles yeah. so he yeah. says the n-word uh probably 800 times so he may be technically the most racist human being in history if context doesn't matter just by saying it so I don't know why he's not canceled posthumously. Anyway, that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could have I could have done the impression a little better. <laughs> you uh, know, make it make it a little more obvious it was an impression, but yeah, I don't know. Right. I just thought you were doing a white racist guy being very I mean, just uh yeah. That was my impression of your impression. Yeah, I was doing an impression of myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in comedy, it is, it's dicey because 
once you're on that stage, it's almost anything goes because it's all under the umbrella of comedy. And that's not the way it goes anymore. Uh, I, I'd like to see. So you're doing sketches. How do you how do you get in front of Lauren or who hears that you're good enough to even audition? How does that go? I think they saw me doing stand up at JFL or Clusterfest, which is a Comedy Central thing. Okay. So I was doing I did new faces at just for laughs mm -hmm. in Montreal. And I guess SNL people were there and saw me and liked it and asked me to audition. Actually, they asked me to write first and I, I didn't submit a packet because I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to be a writer. Could I just ask? Wow. OK. How did you get that good that fast? Because that's like 2019. They saw you and you started in 2012. So, yeah, that's like hardly beginning in some ways. But so you got really good, really fast. So you just took to it. You were like in your early 20s. Yeah, I just, just did it uh, every day. And yeah. did you write every day? Did you listen, record, listen, and write? Or you just got up every day and kind of... Yeah, I, honestly, that's where podcasting really helps is me and my friend just joked around every week for a couple hours. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, you're just sitting there riffing and you're like, all right, that could work. And then you go to an open mic that night. Like, all right, that works. And you're early in on podcasting too, so... You're way ahead of the game on that. And um, yeah, does that get you enough of a base? Because podcasting is obviously bigger now. Dane and I are, have been assigned to do this one. And so uh, <laughs> <laughs> through through jury duty, yeah, we get we get points for this on my Amex card. So we uh, so you do that I'm and then it gets London. you enough of a bubbling audience to <laughs> go to just your for last. shows what and stuff. What was your first you, big yeah. one? Yeah, Montreal, the Just for Last was that was that a big deal at the time to be asked? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. I wanted to do I wanted new faces very bad. Yeah. And that really, really launches people, that show, if you kill. It, yeah. And some it doesn't, which is worse, right? They they go yeah. and then nothing happens. Well, they book a lot of people that aren't good. So <laughs> if you're like I'd been doing stand up for ten years when they booked me. So it was like most of the, some of those people that they book for new faces are like literally like two years in. I was yeah. like, some of them are like, some of them are like twenty years old. I was it's like 30. open mic faces. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah, if you're not Eddie Murphy or something, you you it's you it's a disfavor when they put people on when they're not ready. Yeah, well, really. Shane, when I did uh just to keep interrupting you, when I did uh a, HBO, yeah, we had a young so comedian <laughs> special. HBO young comedians hosted by Dennis Miller, who was one of my favorites at the time. So they do that, and that was sort of the only game in town. But on TV, it was sort of equivalent to what you're saying, and. uh I, they had like the young comedians, but you know, I always joke, it's like Richard Belzer and people. And I'm like, wait, I'm actually a young comedian. Can I be on this? And I was on that borderline of having a pretty good eight to 10 to 12 minutes, but not much more, but at least that was pretty polished to get me on. And then after that, you got to sort of go, but that was six of us, Rob Schneider, Drake say there's, there's people on there. So that helped me the way that J that JFL thing is for you. And that's where SNL saw me. And so you get this break and then it's, then the, the talks start happening. Oh, did you have an agent and everything at this point? Um, yes, I did have an agent. I was with UTA. Oh, yeah. big one, big one, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, they dropped me during the I was SNL about to thing. say, God damn it, did they <laughs> drop you? Uh, Wait a minute. Cowards. Those a, cowards. A oh, corporation wow. got nervous and actually <laughs> let you go. Oh, man. Hey, you want to you know something funny? Uh, they, yeah. they kept they kept Jussie Smollett for a very, very long time. Oh, too long. Wow. Yeah, they kept wow. him until like this year. Yeah. <laughs> this year. Yeah. Oh, we feel like they. Yeah. Wow. Well, they actually anyway, had the noose. Funny? He gave him the noose as sort of a souvenir and they had it yeah. in the lobby of UTA. Damn. Uh, what we can't do that <laughs> what was a fake noose am i can't i think i'm canceled every day but i feel like i'm too irrelevant and too from the 60s to get canceled. your special is called I could too old to cancel too you can't cancel me life is canceling me <laughs> yeah. if i the was Grim a fuel, reaper if i was a fuel gauge i'd be less than a quarter tank i'd be like an eighth of a tank if my lifespan was a fuel gauge. it would be so, like this bung, 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 bung. <laughs> yeah and i'd just be just cutting down as i got into the gas, gas station but um, anyway, so you blow up. Do you remember how, uh, what were you feeling then? Like, you, it seemed like you were on a rocket ship in a way. Oh, you, you kill it just for laughs. No, no, it wasn't a rocket. I was well, like. <laughs> well, you killed, you killed in Montreal. That's what I heard. Anyway. Yes, that yeah. was good. Yes, I did well there. And then, 
Yeah, I mean, it was it wasn't like crazy. I just started like headlining, but then yes, there was a lot of offers quick, including SNL was like right away. SNL was okay. SNL was like, we want you to. They sent me a writer's packet. I didn't do it, but then they were like, we want. You, they asked me to audition, and they were like straight to main stage audition. Um, so they'd already eight, seen me eight four. Right yes. on the tongue where they do the right they call where the, the monologue, tongue. yeah, monologue, right, yeah. right, Dana, where they, yeah. yeah, the monologue is, yeah, and there's 20 people in the audience. Go ahead. Yeah, Go there's. Ahead. It was one of those things where I was like, I'm, I'm literally, I'm never gonna get this SNL. They're not gonna, you know, I'm not that type of guy right now where SNL is, and I figured there's no chance. And I was like, I was not nervous. I was sitting in the green room. You know how they they make you wait for like two hours, <laughs> I guess. I guess to kind of like rattle you. I was I literally I didn't care. <laughs> Lauren, I think does. He's not I've never talked to him about it, but I do think he likes to kind of rattle people around that situation just to, just to see if they can handle when the red light goes on without you yeah. know shitting themselves. So you you go on you're so loose and you, cuz you don't give well, a no, shit. You think no, you have, I, Oh no. Okay, you got I nervous. thought I I thought I didn't care until you walk through that tunnel and you see the the stage and then I was like, "Oh fuck." Like, "Oh, this is it." And uh yeah, as soon as I got I was so nervous my the mic was shaking. So I had to like put it against my chin to do the set. I've gotten and a shaky then, hand uh, before. It's yeah, tough. It's, it's embarrassing. It catches you off guard. You're like, "Am I shaking?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you hold uh, it with both hands then maybe, right? True. No, no, that makes sense. I should have. Could you see Lauren's face when you were up there? Yeah, but just kind of a shadow. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. Dana Red smoke coming up. Like <laughs> yeah, Dana. I've, when I was there, he holds a flashlight under his chin <laughs> in the dark <laughs> <laughs> and and makes sounds like Whoa, <laughs> show. So then, um, so you thought? Did you? What did you think when you? Got off. I mean, were you did just, you do Trump? I I don't think I did do a Trump impression. I could be wrong. I did a joke about Trump that it's funny that the joke at the time was like it's funny to watch every comedian go on and make fun of Trump. And it's like they're lucky he's not here. He would bury all these comedians, <laughs> including me. I like do it. Oh yeah, you know what I did? I did do a Trump because the rest of that joke is him following me and calling me a fat loser and. <laughs> how he would how he would definitely be go ahead to, i want to hear it what a loser that guy very fat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very fat very fat you know you, that i saw that a bit and it is he it was like a shooting gallery when he went up against the other republicans oh, and it was, my, and it was mean, extraordinary sleepy or low energy, low energy. Yeah, <laughs> little sleepy Marco. joe caught on too that was hot uh, he's, got was, he's got a new one right now for uh ron de sanctimonious <laughs> i know and what do you think of that i don't a think little it's just, bumpy but i'm i'm getting I'm back i'm not in sure it. if i get sanctimony from desantis i'm not <laughs> sure know. if it it just you know, it rhymes, you know, it's, so you got the D and the E and you just continue it. And you know what you got. But it, I, I don't know if that's the best nickname. It's not his it's best not work, best. but it's good, though, that he's still trying. I mean, no matter what, he, any nickname he gives somebody is funny because it's coming <laughs> from him. I mean, Sleepy's yeah. not the best nickname. It's fucking... It's just funny that he's out there making fun of other politicians. Of course. Little Rocket Man was ballsy. Little Rocket oh, Man. Little was... Rocket Man. <laughs> tiny Rockets. Little tiny uh, Rockets. Yeah. <laughs> tiny yeah. hands. Like but you the do a rudest. great one. And you let, you have the bill. I mean, you look, I, I'm not saying you look like him, but you look I you. more. I mean, I'm such a pencil neck. I, you could put me in anything, but uh, you actually, you know, it was a cool look you my had favorite, on the sketch uh, show. My favorite one was. Uh, Mini Mike Bloomberg. He literally ended Bloomberg. <laughs> Bloomberg had a I Bloomberg. Forgot about they that. ended the they ended the campaign. He called him Mini Mike, and they they were like, "All right, we, we thought, they put a billion dollars into the campaign." He called him Mini Mike, and they're like, "All, it's right, over. all it took was the word Mini and Mike, and a billion dollars <laughs> yeah. went away." That's it just hysterical. makes you sound like the biggest asshole. He doesn't even put it through a computer. He just says it, and you're like, "Yeah, we ran a hundred, and that's the best one." Well, the what best you, one to make you feel like an asshole. If you were running against him and you knew he was going to come at you, I mean, how could you advise DeSantis? Like, ignore it, come back at it, or, you know. If I was DeSantis, I'd say Humpty Trumpty had a big fall. Daffy uh, Donald. Daffy Donald, yeah, I Yeah, but you can't, you can't 
combat it unless it's authentic because some of those yeah. other guys tried to do it and it just, I know. <laughs> oh, it was humiliating. It's so bad. Rubio those tried to go after his hands. Yeah. Little little hands and uh it did it, 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 it looked yeah. terrible. All it did was give Trump an alley oop to go on a debate and say he had a big dick. Yeah. <laughs> it it's true. Just made it funny. Let it me like, tell you, there's no problem down there, right? <laughs> yeah. There's no yeah. problem. And he pointed to his cock. There's no <laughs> problem. It it's still the most exotic political creature in the history it's of probably insane. the two thousand years. I don't know about you know He's up there with open micers. It's impossible. He's like a seasoned headliner. Oh, if you put him in a hip hop rap competition, I mean, Eminem would have trouble. Everyone would be in trouble. The only way to beat him is you got to be you got to be uh, Biden. You got to just have no clue what he's saying. Just totally, <laughs> <laughs> just totally be unfazed. You can't get your feelings hurt. You're just a, you're just up there talking. Well, I have a theory, Shane, that when he went to the first debate, he was I think he had an MM, a UFC fighter with him on the plane. And I think he got really amped up Trump. So what oh, you yeah. what you would have been, smarter for him to do would be let Biden talk, but he wouldn't let him talk. And that kind yeah. of made Biden look really good. Yeah. yeah, that first I remember that first debate. Trump looked awful, hyperbolic. And then Biden yeah. didn't have to really complete a sentence. He just could go Look at this guy. <laughs> come on. What do you say? Some come people on. says it's Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Oh, let's go back. Let's go back, Dana. So he goes, does audition. Let's no, no real impressions. Yeah. Uh, nervous. A little bit of Trump. M Mike on chin. You do probably eight minutes. I don't know how long you yeah, do. Yeah, I think it was only like five. Okay. Uh, smattering of applause, I'm guessing. Thank Actually, you. Actually, they were laughing the whole time. Oh, great. So I, it was in my head that I was nervous because I ran into Michael Che that night at a club and he was like, you did. He was like, you killed it. And I was like, oh, I thought I was nervous. He was like, least nervous one by far. Oh, cool. 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 Even though wow. I, in my head, I was in my head. I mean, my hand probably wasn't that bad. But that's the beginning of the psychology, Dana, of like, oh, wait, is there a chance I might get this fucking job? Yeah, that's exactly right away. I got done. Yeah. When I got done, I was like, oh, I fucking bombed. No chance. Huh. And then that night I ran into Che and he was like, no, you did great. And I was like, oh, shit. I'm going to fucking get this and then i started to get like a little i don't know i was never like happy yeah, oh like, no oh no I, you wouldn't be happy yeah. says sense of dread right that's what i when i first got it i i felt sick yeah. to my stomach and dreadful like maybe i'll i'll bomb on the show or what was your what was your vibe what was your what, like dread or just anxiety yeah, i think i think yeah. dread and anxiety is exactly what it, like everybody else was like oh you must have been so happy i was like i mean the only cool part was i got to call my parents and tell them that was the first thing in comedy they have understood. Yeah. You know, but other than that, it was like, I was, yeah, I kind of fucking knew something bad was coming. <laughs> sure enough. Uh, how Now, what's the time frame now? They, do they uh, hire you the next day? Do they it was, make an offer? It was quick. They were talking. It was probably end of August. I took or uh, audition. September 12th is when they announced it. Okay. So, so they announced you're on the new something mm -hmm. cast yeah. feature player new cat. yeah new feature player and literally within five hours whoa right away Damn. and it, it was funny this is the funniest part i was i was on my way to do stand-up so i was <laughs> i was on the train in new york my agent calls and was like did you say the word i said and i was like no i would never say that and then i hit a train stop so or in between stops i lose service and then the next text I get once the train starts again is a video of me saying it. I'm mm. like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. And then the next stop is like, you know, CNN. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. Oh, boy. Next stop. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> yeah. maybe I in passing a, a little yeah. utterance. <laughs> it literally was just a video <laughs> of my face, like not even smiling, just saying it. I was like, oh, uh, shit. No context, nothing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This oh, is man. Uh, public enemy number one. Damn. Yeah. Well, the, I, hopefully they have a new protocol, like vet, if you have a problem with someone, don't let them audition. You know, yeah. this was a mistake. I don't know who vets people and who who's the decider. But well, here, that's, that's another thing is like, they did vet like the same way they, everybody else was like an improv person. They don't have, they didn't have podcasts at the time. Uh, yeah. They just checked my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I didn't well, really like, ever. No one vets like Twitter yeah. people. 
Yeah. Like they're, they're like, this guy, uh uh-uh, we'll we'll figure it out. Give us five hours. Yeah. They got me with the podcast though, is like, uh, nobody's going to sit down and listen to a thousand hours. Right. It's tough to vet the podcast. I told them, I was like, I have a podcast and I say the word gay on it a lot. And they're like, yeah, that's fine. I omitted that oh. one. <laughs> so it, you guys actually l- literally had a thousand hours of that podcast or hundreds of hours. It was yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so how many times did you use that slur? <laughs> I don't know. I, before that video, I would have said zero. But then there's, <laughs> there's been a couple. There's been a couple. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, these some of these sketches you do, like I saw Isis, Toyota, uh, are these done before? Or were you saying some of your apprehension with SNL is maybe your sketches, it, when you went there to write or be in, you might write something that's even too far for them. So is that part of your fear? Like it might be like, they might not like, I'm not saying you're a horrible person. I'm just saying some people like to push it and some people oh, do different yeah, things, yeah, you yeah. know. No, that wasn't my apprehension at all. It was okay. like, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just a me thing. It was something good happening. Yeah. I and I was kind of like, oh, it's like, is, don't wish bad. too hard. Then you get something. You don't really probably yeah. wish for SNL, but like Dana was always that type of character guy that that's like the perfect spot for him. With me, it wasn't quite as perfect, but, but I, I'm sure I, I bombed terrified. out twice. I, I auditioned for it and I had no confidence at all that I could be on it. It's you know, later. It's like, Oh, you should, Oh, it was a obvious pick, but no, what I'm curious about <laughs> on a human level, because when I got blue thunder with James Farantino, a, a TV show in 1984, I called my parents. It is sort of a thing that you kind of do, even though I had yeah. issues with my dad. Um, but do, were you the one to have to call them the second time? And what did that feel like? Uh, no, the news. The news <laughs> got it. So then yeah. they called you. Yeah. <laughs> Shame. Every, every, everyone called. Everyone called and was like, are you all right? Are you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm all right. I was I was actually, I wasn't even like that. I mean, I kind of blacked it out a little. It was like so much. Ugh, but yeah, I wasn't right. like, uh, I don't think I was like devastated. I was kind of just. Numb. Out of it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I knew yeah I could, you're inside of stand up. <laughs> Your rocket almost didn't get off the launching pad. That's the thing. You weren't way out in space falling. You were like, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I had, I had zero. Yeah, I didn't lose anything. I had zero dollars. Mm-hmm. I like, I lost an opportunity, but it was all of a sudden I just had a lot of attention on me, which was weird. It was uncomfortable. Um, you know, Dana, I wonder surreal. if it comes down to like, I know these are corporations. I know Lauren has a good sense of humor and I know, you know, Dana himself, there's been sketches in the past that aren't, that wouldn't fly today. Of course. Oh, yeah. That's just I did an Asian character in uh, the eighties. Um, and uh, I, I was called out for it being inappropriate, you know? So uh, it's tough to, it's what tough was because- the accent? Oh, a full full Asian. I, I live near what Chinatown. No, San- just do it real quick. I will. I, I lived in Chinatown, just a context, or near it in San Francisco. And I used to see this guy in his yard, Chinese gentleman, with a with a a a, cha- a, a, a leash on a chicken. Yeah. So then I had a flight of fancy of a character from China who opens a pet chicken store, maybe in Manhattan, but he loves the chicken so much that he talks people out of buying them. So it wasn't any sort of stero- stereotypical thing. It was like, so Lovitz came in and go, how, mu- you know, how much for this chicken? And I would say, oh, you don't want that chicken. That chicken, he, he think he like dog, but he not dog. You throw Frisbee, <laughs> he don't even catch it. He poke hole in it. One minute you got Frisbee, next minute you got spaghetti strainer because chicken make a lousy <laughs> house pet. So that there was- it was. Catchphrase. Ch- the catchphrase would change. And then I would sing to my fair lady that people would leave. And I go across them to his beak. And that ran three times. And then Candace Bergen came on as a customer and she told me that I was a racial stereotype. And that's how that was the last one we did. We we made fun or we acknowledged yeah. it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. for me coming in, we go by Bill Burr was on our show and he just said, What's your intent? Is your intent to hurt? Uh, to me, it was naivete. I wouldn't even understand uh, right. that being offensive in 1986, 80, 87. And neither, neither did anyone in the show. Nobody. Nobody flagged it or talked about it. So, But now we're in 2022, and uh, 
I, I do think that if people see you and listen to you on this and see your special, see your stuff, it has its own edge to it, but you're a very uh, likable gentleman, you know, because they make you into this boogeyman character. And the yeah. more we see you, we meaning the, the public at large, like here's a guy who's goofing around on a podcast for a thousand hours with a friend saying outrageous things. And we've all done that in the back of sure. a car with our comedian friends after a gig. Yeah. How, how else do you make a comedian laugh without certain words that going too far? Yeah, and yeah. you know you are, but you're not doing it. You're just doing it because the shock value. You don't t take it into your heart. End of statement. <laughs> I talked. By too the much. way, Shane doesn't ever agree that he's funny and he's humble. You know, he doesn't. We keep telling him, and he's never like, "I knew I was really good." When <laughs> he seems, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. he seems to take it all in. Like we all know, this business is very fickle, and who's to say who's actually really funny? It's just. You just cross your fingers, and if keep, people keep coming to the shows, it's great. If they watch your special, it's great. And you know it could be rug pulled any day. You just don't know. It's very tough. It's tough to be cocky. Yeah, you'd have to be a real dumbass. Yeah. I mean, I I hear you on Rogan a lot. Now, when you go on Rogan a lot, I think you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's cool that Joe has this huge place and he still invites all his buddies on and they just laugh and i think it just sounds like fun and uh that and that always probably unintentionally gives you a bump somewhere either oh it gives me, it's what. huge it's huge yeah rogan rogan show yeah and it's also i think you know i don't want to speak for him but i think it's good for him like he needs it too he needs to like well it's fun he's, he's huge he's might be the most he's he, like he can't go outside well, like, yeah. he, he's the number one show kind of in the world. I mean, it's 70 yeah. million yeah, people. Forget podcasts. It's just show. He's bigger. Yeah. yeah. Bigger than any television show, bigger than most movies as far as that audience. And so you're a regular uh, on that. So, yeah, I guess your club dates just lines around the block. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> you, very you good. Know? That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I think Rogan, like, I think, yeah, I mean, he always has his friends on. He always keeps his friends around. Like he's, yeah, it probably keeps him sane. It, I'm sure it does. Sandler's like that. Sandler's pretty big up there. And, you know, yeah. he just did a tour and he's like, can you come out for a week and just come on stage or come out the beginning and then we'll sing a song together just because it's, it's probably not quite as fun as it used to be in a weird way. And Rogan is, there must be so much responsibility in a weird way that he suddenly has, you know, that he yeah. didn't even want. And now he has all these interesting people on. And then he has interesting comics. You guys all come on and bullshit. It's just fun for him and the audience, I, I would imagine. Yeah. I knew, wait, where where were you? You were just with Sandler, right? I just went out. Yeah, we just did uh, some in the Southeast. I was with East Adam South. Egan. I was with Adam Egan. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. He told me you yeah, were, we were doing drunk. Some. We were drunk. And I was like, text Sandler, dude, do it, do it. That'll be cool. <laughs> and he texted Sandler and he said, it. Spade's on stage. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I'm fucking bombing, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, he was talking shit. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a little quiet in there. <laughs> no, it is fun. <laughs> in the it's arena. A, yeah. It's fun. Schneider was there. I think Apatow did a few. I think Conan's doing a few. He just, uh, oh, um, Swartzen. And, oh, uh, I just it, met him. Swartzen came to my show in, uh, I was in Florida. Yeah, don't buy his bullshit. Just met him for the first time. He's wild. <laughs> yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he's a great dude. So we all sort of are in that sort of world too. So, you know, that's fun. It's all fun with the comedian buddies and 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 that's great. You have a place to go, go screw off. I mean, uh, now you still do, you obviously do stand up. Um, and what are your thoughts about, like Theo is big, Theo and I are writing a movie and he's big on, why don't we just... Um, put it on YouTube. I'm like, I think what we're finding is a special is easier because you're only you, you know? And when you're a movie, there's guild problems and there's everyone needs to get paid a certain amount. And then just, just the idea of fun, fun, throw it on YouTube. It's, it, it got very complicated very fast. So yeah, we might go more conventional way, but I do like the idea of, of what you're doing and things like that. Cause your special was it cave in the Creek. What's it called? Yeah, the creek in the, it's at the Creek in the Cave. It was just in live, live in Austin. Yeah, pretty lo-fi. Yeah. Show a few people coming in, getting a couple seven and sevens and sit down yeah. and have a drink. And uh, you just come out in a t-shirt and, you I think know. I, I, yeah, I, I love Dana it. Dana wishes he did that, right? Well, Dana? I've done three shitty specials. And <laughs> hold your applause. Only because I, you know, 
you're you're working out in the clubs, and I usually do little characters and sketches. I'm in a little club, and I'm just on this roll and the rhythm and everything. And then you go in the big room, and the air conditioner breaks the first night, so they can't use it. And then the second night, there's like nine cameras. So yeah. then the 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 because they have all those angles, you're like watching a special, bam, as if you're a flying seat. You'd fly into the guy's face. Then you go way yeah. to the back. You're like whipped around. And it just soaks all the funniness out of it. So when I saw yours, I'm like, okay, this is organically shot so clean, so simple. Just it's, like you're sitting in a club watching that. And you're yeah. laugh, laughing your ass off with it. You, you, they're not, there's no remix. There's no, you don't even hear the audience that much. You see them a little bit, but you're killing. So I think that's just the way stand-up should be done. But of course, people want you to play arenas because then you'll be booked yeah. in arenas and old Jed's a millionaire. But yeah, that, that had a magic to it of a guy showing up just at a club in Austin. And that's my You're also yeah. fighting your way back. Uh, and, and, you know, the audience sometimes is aware of cameras. There's, it's nothing like you, the, the, the night before when you killed a club and you're practicing for it. Then you come in and it's lit and they're like, those are camera seats. No one can sit there. And then there's a fucking jib going to swing in front of them. And people are like, how, how do I act? I'm in the audience. What yeah. if they show me? I had masks in mine. Everyone had a fucking mask. Oh. I was like, oh, I didn't even know it. Oh, And I'm like, God, because my opener was on and he was doing okay. And I go, oh, don't give me a tough crowd tonight. And when he got oh. off, he goes, oh, they all have N95s. I go, oh my God, that's right. That's fucking terrible. I, I know. know. And all the so cameras, tough. the trucks are there. You don't get another oh, shot at it. That's terrible. I know. And Sandler did like 200 shows. You know, not 200, but we were filming when Sandler was doing his special we were just filming each night because he has the means. He just took the money he got and put it right in the special and said, I'll film this night. I'll film that night. I'm going to go in the alley and shoot a piece there. I'm going to go to a tiny club. And then it just really fun because it's a whole like thought out. It's like a big show. You know, that's yeah. different. And he doesn't know he's shooting a special. Like when I was doing it behind my eyes and I'll see people, I can tell that they know they're shooting their special. So there's yeah. that little bit of tension in the eyes. But Adam Yuck. did so many nights that he's just fucking around. But did you shoot more than one night at that club? No, that was one. That was basically, yeah, it was two shows one night. Yeah. That, for the people at home, that's the standard. Two shows, one night. First one's usually not as good. And then they say it's good. And then the second yeah. one, you actually do good. And then they go, we'll use all that. But it's like, you yeah. know, your next one, if you went to a bigger room and you went with Netflix, would be like, are you ready to rock? Whoa. <laughs> the that's, man. That's, yeah. Are you getting yeah. that now? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing right now. Yeah. Is I'm, I'm about to do a theater tour coming up. And it's like, I don't, I think I want to record the next special I do. I want to do in a club again. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I mean, I'm just not used to theaters at all. I've never you know so maybe i'll like them but right now a club yeah i'm on a theater tour now and it's tough it's it's not my theater tour is like 2000 to 2500 so it's not as big as these guys you hear about and i've never done theaters and we thought about it but i go everyone's doing it nate theo all these guys so i go let me try it and it's a different vibe you know it's a not a pace, but you feel way more responsible. There's a weird feeling of nervousness. Yeah. Like they're paying more, they're staring. This is more of a big <laughs> night out. There's and no then, waitress. There's no drink. They're just there's like, four <laughs> balconies. Yeah. You don't know if they're drinking or what. And it's, you go, you're walking through the back and it's yeah. like all cement. Like you're at a show, like. Stay like in small going, clubs, yeah. Shane. Yeah. Just stay it's in hard, small. <laughs> but no. you make money. Yeah. Look at Nate Bergazzi. Just keeps going bigger and bigger. And, uh. He, he's funny, Dana, because he's the opposite. He's like, I'm everyone's mom's favorite comedian. <laughs> yeah, That's his moniker because he's clean, very hard to be clean and funny, and he's great at it. He's, I just saw him in Vegas recently. He's, his new hour is, it's incredible. He's so believe. good. Yeah, he's smart. He gets the TikToks also, out there. I didn't realize, uh, I was just looking at my image on this. I didn't realize I had a bunch of religious. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, my bad I, on that that's this is my you've got like a fuck fucking are you, are, are, you, are you at your home or your your parents it's my apartment oh your yeah, apartment. apartment okay so are you very religious it's my girlfriend which is fine no this is oh okay yeah. who's that guy in that painting what's happening there that's actually mine that's sick that's father <laughs> that's father corby that's he's blessing the irish brigade at the battle of gettysburg Ooh, oh oh sick and then i'm he became irish the, he became yeah. the president of notre dame i like notre dame football 
Wow. Good stuff, guys. That's podcasting. Jesus Christ. This, could I this. could I make a, a comment about your skills yeah. your skill set since we talked about that, that other guy, Gabe Pagruzzi? What's his name? No, sorry, he's great. Nate. I know it. Nate, uh you I've been compared to Louie. Uh I think it's because you are able to land Fat. really <laughs> no really <laughs> louis louis stock and trade is he landed so many bits that were so sensitive and he made them so funny uh chris rock has done it but you did one on your sister's addiction toward the end of this special and one on yeah. special coaching special olympics kids really tricky topics but wow. you brilliantly landed them so hard. The audience was, when you land something like that, that's the audience seems to laugh so hard, like harder than normal, especially yeah. the special Olympic stuff at the end with the Hooters thing. It's just like, yeah. you know, it's just very difficult. I mean, do you have to vet those? Like you keep working on where the line is to keep them engaged yeah. and stuff. Go for ahead. sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you guys know. Yeah. You start, you have an idea like that. You try it. People are, you do it in an open mic. People are like, oh my God. Yeah. Cause you never do it wrong do, a few yeah. times. Yeah. They're like, never do that again. You're like, I know it's funny. <laughs> I know it's funny. I'm going to keep it. But then there's, you know, there's ones where people are like, never do that again. You're like, I know it's funny. And it's just never funny. Yeah. And you can't you find a way. Just well, really? Keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, there are certain topics that are a little tough. You know. Yeah. That I feel know. weird because I can't do like I'm the worst case scenario. Like I'm white, supposedly rich. I'm male and I'm old. It's like every complaint is coming my way. Yeah. Like I'm an inbox of like everyone's anger and hate. Yeah. It all goes back to me, and and I can't even do jokes. Like you want to go, hey, I, I want to see Hamilton, but I'm waiting for an all white cast. They're like, that's, yeah, that's not funny. These, I, there's no jokes left for me because when do you no, that is funny. when do you get get to be like white joke? There's just you can't. So I just sit there and go. I guess you could. I know, I know, you're right. But like you were sort of officer and a gentleman on your special, going, I got nowhere else to go. So. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, you yeah. might as well just Good come reference. out blazing. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's because you had a not a stigma, but once you leave SNL, and and the way it was uh, a bumpy uh, exit, then you go. So well, if I'm not going to get a Netflix special right away, uh, and you and it looks like you might now, because Ted there, Ted is pretty forgiving about just loving comedy, which luckily. Uh, and so he's willing to sort of grade on a curve, you know, on people. Um, so I would think, but you know, so you go to do a lo-fi special and uh, I like that. And, and there's, there's some people pulling for you, you know, there's some people going, shit, man, some people get a second chance. Does he, you know, yes, yeah. I think Does he so. deserve it. Like that's the world. Do you deserve it? Yeah. Well, that's, and that's, that's the one of, you know, I don't Yeah. That's an unfortunate thing to have is like do i deserve a chance and other other people <laughs> decide that shit and it's yeah. like that sucks that's one of the negative things because you know when you get like canceled or however you want to fucking say it uh consequence people, are like, people are like look at him he's fine it's like no i had to overcome shit like this is it's not easy and now i gotta deal with con i'll never not have scrutiny it'll always be mm -hmm. remember that thing and then you know you know how that is sure but it's also what you know, I'm always watching for the corporations when they drop. If someone's the cancel thing starts to happen, and then the corporations, it's like a hot oven. They don't need it, and so they start. And then the agents fire, and every everyone's let go like that. Dominoes. But the public, most of there's a mass audience that's not as sensitive as this other part of the audience, <laughs> and don't yeah. take off color jokes at face value that's proving something nefarious about the person saying it so well, it's a big audience it, it's when it comes to the corporate i mean it's just money like if 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 uh chappelle had said what i said there'd be no problem if if louis or anybody had said just if that was the only thing they ever said bad it'd be fine i had nothing i had nothing behind me there was no like oh this guy's funny all they mm -hmm. had was that clip right i guess what i'm trying to say is like once you get more fans once you get more all this if you're worth something they'll keep you they don't give a fuck they don't have morals <laughs> yeah. oh no no then once it once it turns then they we always loved them then they'll, yeah. they'll jump i will predict and ted's a friend of ours uh if you want it you can well, do netflix has morals netflix is great 
<laughs> well, they've yeah. they've kept Chappelle under a, a lot yeah. of firestorms. Um, you know, um, I think that the more you keep going, it, you just go the opposite. Like you just come out and do kick ass specials, and you're just doing great uh, on Rogan, and so then it just. You know, Lauren, that'd be a Lauren thing. You know, things are that seem so pr pre will never go away. They just sort of tend to fade over time. And then there's just this other mm. part. There's always going to be people digging something up, but I think it's such a small percentage. Um, I, I, I like to make predictions. I predict you will go to 12,000 seaters w within two years. Jeez. Don't do that. I predicted it. I predicted it for Louie when he was I on say my show. I will be out of the business, so we'll, we'll meet yeah, in the middle yeah. somewhere. 1997, <laughs> I said to Louie, you will headline Madison Square Garden five nights in a row. You, you and he, didn't say that, He did you? took a swing at me. No, he was my oh. head writer of my show. Always an amazing guy. But he's back out there. Yeah. He's a genius. Oh, wait, basically. I want to ask Shane about, uh, we won't keep you all day, Shane, but uh, no. what about, oh, so you, you're, Obviously, I think you're a fan of Norm McDonald, okay. and then he called okay. you, right? Yeah. yeah. That's fucking that cool. Was, that was, see, yeah, it was right. It was all in the same, like, weekend. So it was very surreal. It was like, no one knew who I was. And then I'm on the phone with Louie and Norm and all these guys. But yeah, Norm was exactly who I thought he'd be, which was mm -hmm. cool. He just, you know, I didn't even get a word in. He just kind of ran. I was just, <laughs> I remember I was, I was walking around in my backyard and he was just he was going he was going all about like the state of comedy and how everything is and it was cool it was cool to yeah get to talk to him like the other guy that got let go yeah and snl remember dana <laughs> why was it oh of it was course OJ. i thought he said f-u-c-k word but a lot of OJ stuff. OJ. OJ. <laughs> yeah, OJ's a real nice guy, except like he likes to kill people, you know? No, you know yeah. what? So OJ's <laughs> not guilty now, Dana. Now who's laughing? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a book out. But yeah, there's only one norm, and he had a rhythm to him and a way of speaking that was so unique. I had a couple long phone calls with him, too, that were just fascinating because he goes all over the place. Yeah. You know, you, know, you, you gotta, you know, yeah, a guy buries ten thousand dollars and wants to leave it to their relatives a hundred years later. It's hardly worth anything, right? But if the guy bought a house; it'd be worth like five million dollars. You know, it's just all the stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, whenever, very, whenever I'm with uh, Adam Egan, that's that's usually what we talk about the yeah. whole time. Norm is yeah, in love. Yeah. He's yeah. in love with Norm. I always go, "That's enough." I don't because, know. I've, I'm ooh, with him. I think ooh. Norm's incredible. We were on Lights Out, and he was putting together a podcast. Norm, he's always on the phone for two hours. I go, oh, let's get your head in the game, guys. Like, it's <laughs> Norm. I go, yeah. That is how he talks, dude. He is uh, a little bitch. He's such a little bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I know a guy, Larry Bubbles Brown, that opened for Norm a lot and loves Norm, loved Norm, Larry Bubbles Brown. And yeah. he said Norm would just get on a run, and he'd just walk rooms. San Jose Improv, it's like a 400-seater. And he's just working down on some disease or somebody or something. And, and, the guy, and they just slowly start leaving. He just walks a room and he just keeps going. So he was notorious. And also, what did he say, brilliant. Dana, about fighting cancer? He goes, yeah, the battle. The draw. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I see a guy. Die, yeah. And the yeah. cancer dies. I'd say that's a draw. He said <laughs> <laughs> I saw a guy. He said he's putting up a big fight. You know, he, I saw a guy in bed. You know, just watching television. I, I didn't see him fighting very much. You know, yeah, he was watching Matlock. <laughs> yeah, mm. but yeah, he was a genius. We such a weirdo when we're on yeah, the road with uh, we. We did Sandler tour the last time, and it was more of us. But when Norm, he, he wouldn't sleep at night, so he, we'd go up to the ele, you know, in the elevator on our floor. And he goes, you want to come in and hang out? And I go, because I'm, I'm the biggest <laughs> pussy of the whole group. I go, Norm, it's midnight. We got to get up and fly. Uh, we'll order food. I go, no. And I go, I'm just going to go take a tub and go to bed. He goes, you can take a tub in here and then we'll talk. I go, through the door or you're coming in? He goes, it's up to you. <laughs> it's very I go, I think I'm just going to go in my room. He goes, you're lost. <laughs> and that's every night every night i walk yeah. by and we walk up are you coming in i go norm i don't know what's going on i don't know now adam adam told me a story and i don't you know i don't want to be telling tales out of school here but yeah. uh telling tales it was it was it was you 
you guys were on a plane. I think it was a private jet. And Norm was sitting there. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, Is no, this, this one. Do you yeah, remember this? Yes. I'll let. Well, you tell me if it's no. You tell it, and I'll tell you if right. it's even. So this is what I think. Now I'm hearing it from Adam. I think you were like standing up, and I guess your crotch was like right in Norm's face. <laughs> so, I forget exactly, but he was like, "Hey, like get your dick out of my face. I'm trying to sleep." And then he was like, "Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, open his mouth." No, maybe well, I'm fucking. Well, I fucked that. Up. He, he said. <laughs> There was two chairs facing the two in the back of the plane. So yeah, see? Yeah, so you it's, tell it. it's two other, you know, so two or two, and then I'm, we all just stand and bullshit. And so I'm leaning against his chair, and he goes, Hey, Spade, do you mind not having your dick right next to my fucking mouth while you're talking? And I go, Oh, sorry. And I lean back. Then he goes, By the way, if I fall asleep, you better not take that hot, juicy, card cock and stuff it in my mouth. And then he tilts his head back and closes his eyes and opens his mouth. <laughs> and everyone stares at him. And then we all laugh. I don't know if I can tell that. That's why I never told that. We don't what? know. That story's incredible. I know. It's funny. He's, our, well, it's our funny baby to us. We boomer all fans will, will no, be. No, no one's going to be offended by that. That's fucking great. Did Norm, did, when he got into bed at night, did he just giggle for an hour of all the things he said to people all day? <laughs> yeah, every guy was fading on the plane there. Yeah, oh, my mouth. He's fed his cock, you know. <laughs> he must have just, because. It is funny. He would he just, does. he was a, a kind of a, he would be a rabble rouse. I don't know what you would call him, almost a flim flam man. He would just play with you, but I would just start doing an impression back to him, you know. Hey, just you knew he was just sort of fucking with you in such a funny way all the time. So funny. Yeah. Mm. So you, that's a good influence. Yeah, for it's good to have. Yeah, you like Patrice O'Neill. You like Chappelle. You like. I'm looking at your list. It's all good people. Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Mac, Bernie. dude. I've been yeah, on a real Bernie, Bernie Mac. Mac kick. Oh, yeah. The kings going, of yeah, yeah. the one he's, where he's set, yeah, yeah, it was Bernie. Who else? But yeah, oh, the kings of comedy, or is that, is that what it was? The Kings of Comedy was DL, Cedric, Bernie Mac, and uh, what? Um, what's his name? Harvey? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it, it was so powerhouse that you're like, did did Bernie follow Harvey or vice versa? No, Bernie Bernie went last. Okay, so he followed a, lo uh, a lot yeah. of he followed a lot, a lot of, of killing, crazy, crazy, all, over the top killing. And then he brought it up to another another level. And he just, yeah, he, that's the he does the milk and cookies bit on that, and I think that's one of the best. It's one of the greatest stand up bits of all time. Yeah, and just the his he phrase calls kid, he calls a kinder corner <laughs> six year old a, ho <laughs> a six year old he a homosexual. <laughs> yeah, just, oh, what a voice! I mean, what a voice! Yeah. Just a so quick cry, do some push ups. <laughs> Yes. I like well, I like your first joke. I think on your special, Shane, you start out with like a cold opening of what's the uh, who came up with the age of consent in the old days. Yeah, and and the guy goes, "I'm from Delaware." I say twelve, and then everyone goes, "Whoa!" And you go, "Hey, I don't want to go first. Like, what do you yeah, think? Twelve yeah, yeah, yeah. higher?" <laughs> uh, and then it's then you sort of fade out. Then you go into people coming into the club. That's a good opening. I like that. Well, that's that good. This is a lot of this is. I mean, all this is McKeever, John McKeever. He's the guy who I do the sketches with. He he really directed and set this whole thing up on how to do this. And that joke was kind of it was quick and it was kind of out of place in the special. Mm -hmm. Perfect place. So he was just it. like, here, what if we just op directly open it with it? It just this? shows especially, what it's going to be like, you know? Yeah, like, especially oh, on like, YouTube. Yeah. If you don't, you're like, if you don't like this one, you're not going to like the rest. Yeah, yeah. So, but might it, as well it, start it, here. It's so called inappropriate, but then you're you're quoting a founding father or something. or you know, So it's it's like smart yeah. and, you know, <laughs> like, because yeah. they had to come up with an age of consent, I guess, or whatever they're trying to figure out. No, I mean that also that also didn't happen until like the nineties. <laughs> like that just happened. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> of, well then it was zero back then. That was even worse. There was, there was no there was no rules. no rules. You could marry your uh, twelve year old cousin yeah. in those days. Like I, it, all right, well, Abraham Dana, Lincoln did. Anything <laughs> else for this young man? I, I had a good time talking to um, you. Um just uh just what's your headspace these days? Like when when we get off the Zoom, what are you what are you feeling good? You're gonna go out for ice cream with your girlfriend or what what where are you? <laughs> no, I gotta I gotta get in a car and drive across the George Washington Bridge. 
to that's go to go to New York to go to Pennsylvania. A, get oh, Pennsylvania. out of New York. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. right. I played Parks Casino like I a month like- ago, and before I went out, they go, "Hey, this is Buck County. This is Trump." country bucks count yeah yeah so i just took my glasses off squinted my eyes and walked around as biden and it was like the beatles had landed they were just <laughs> yeah, it was just yeah. like hey there's people so on and really tight hip flexors gonna you know shaking hands with invisible people it was like a two-minute yeah. pantomime i mean uh conservative crowds are a little easier i don't know why that is well that's yeah but for that, me see, anyway. I, I run i run into this thing where i'm like i i don't know i get weird about it because i was just in florida and they were all all trump like oh, I, I so then it's there. too far in a way. Then. Yeah, the second like because it's it's fun to do these jokes in New York where everyone gets upset. Yeah, like if you go on stage and say Trump's the man, it's funny. Yeah. In yeah. Manhattan, it's funny. Yeah. In Florida, they're like, yeah. And it's oh, like, they're taking know. it serious like it's a rally fuck. then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like okay. fuck. That's not what I want. I want this to be funny. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, good lord. Yeah. Well, um, so much fun uh, looking at your stuff these last couple days and. Um, you're going to be fine. I don't know. What am I supposed to say? I, I just, I, no, I'm, 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 I'm a, he, he already <laughs> landed on his feet. He's all right, but it's good. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing you in person, bud. Yeah, me too, man. You guys yeah. are awesome. I'm a big fan. Thank yeah. you so much. We'll, uh, it took him an hour to say that, Dana, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> I get, you guys are <laughs> talking all the time. I know. I pro- got the confidence we give them. I probably talked a little if too they're much. Real. I usually have podcasts regret and I go, why did I say that? Why, uh, didn't, why didn't I let Shane finish that's, that sentence? That's exactly what happens. I do podcasts constantly and there's not one podcast that I don't have immense anxiety after. Yeah, even if you're yeah. a guest, like, why did I interrupt him? Why didn't I say that? Why did I? Uh, what is that about? So you have it too. Oh, I'm glad. I mean, mine might be. I'm from, not alone. Mine might be from getting fucking destroyed for something I said on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait! A minute. I think you got something there. Yeah, yeah. I, I see where you're going. Yeah, that's could be from that time I got publicly crucified. Yeah, but yeah. It's part of it. <laughs> okay, man. Well, hey, thanks, buddy. You guys rule. Thank you so much. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 